introducing uh, Melissa Leach, who is the IDS Incoming Director, to say a few words. Well, thank you very much. Um, my name is Melissa. As has been said, I'm going to be um, the overall director of IDS from next month. Not quite in that position yet, but exciting times ahead. And a particularly exciting set of debates, I think, um, to be had around this emerging Centre for Business and Development. And I've got the rather difficult task of kind of offering some concluding themes and thoughts around what has been an incredibly rich afternoon, I think. Um, so there were just a few things I wanted to flag and then some hopes for what I hope this centre might be able to do for us. So, I mean, I approach this actually not as somebody who's worked very strongly in the business and development field um, and a little bit as an observer from the outside, but as somebody who has worked over many, many years on very grassroots issues with poor people, mostly in African contexts, um, and around questions of sustainability and rights and gender. And my first observation, really, I think it's come through implicitly from all of this discussion, is that the context in which we're having this debate is one that's very different from some of the old aid agendas. We're not just in a world where, as has been discussed, um, finance and, and business investments are now dwarfing um, official development assistance, but we're also no longer in a country where, the, in a context where those old divisions between North and South really make any sense. As has emerged this afternoon, um, questions of um, global responsibility to, to meet sustainability goals, to steer within what being talked about as planetary boundaries to address the challenges of climate change and sustainability are now very much shared ones and equally the challenges of poverty and inequality and I would really underline that are ones that are shared everywhere where they're with us in the UK as much as they are in in Africa in Asia in the rising powers and I think this creates a very different kind of global context for thinking about business and development now what we've heard about this afternoon is a lot of very, I mean, I would sum it up really, is a lot of optimism about the kind of revolution that we might be able to see through linking business and development to address not just growth, but growth that is inclusive, that's respecting planetary boundaries and ecological limits, and is meeting human rights and inequality and poverty reduction concerns. And speaker after speaker has given us a range of very exciting and positive examples. So um, we've seen the enormous contributions of business in innovation, whether it's around technologies, products, ways of delivering services, social innovations. We've seen the potential of businesses to create jobs, crucial everywhere. Um, and we've seen that sense of, of filling gaps and a kind of dynamic vibrancy to meet the needs of poor people in contexts where, as has been discussed, states are often failing to do so. Um, and I think some of the messages that have emerged for me, when I first looked at this programme, I thought quite a lot of our speakers are kind of from big business. But I think what's emerged from the discussion is the importance of small as well as big business, the informal as well as the formal, the roles of social entrepreneurs, of the grassroots kinds of innovation, of informal business actors as well as big ones. A lot of discussion about the potentials for, for big business to support small business and for them to work together. I think we've also had some really interesting examples which show that it's not just businesses, it's, it's about the interactions often in making things work between businesses and civil society, communities, states, um, a set of alliances in meeting challenges that are often very, very, very complex. But going beyond that, um, I think what's beyond the kind of positive examples, um, what I've been listening out for and have, have taken very strongly are some more fundamental challenges that I think this whole debate needs to face. And, and John Humphrey kind of summed it up quite early on, that we need to be thinking both about um, encouraging businesses to do less harm and encouraging them to do more good. Now, I think the emphasis of today's discussion has been on the ways they're already doing more good and how they could do a bit more good. Um, 
I've often been working in contexts where one is really seeing businesses doing harm, quite serious harm, um, where we've got um, profit-oriented um, agricultural investments which are causing quite serious land grabs, where we've got um, the lock-in of energy supply companies in fossil fuel systems that are causing serious climate change. A myriad of other examples, and our, our, our Oxfam speaker revealed some of, some of those that are being looked at there. And I think this also very much needs to be on the agenda. There are businesses out there that are very much ignoring externalities or putting the social and the environmental out there as externalities that don't need to be taken into account. So I think part of our debate, and an aspect I'd like to hear more of, are about how to hold those businesses to account. Regulation, challenge, um, the roles of civil society and campaigns, um, and also standards, environmental and social standards, not just on paper, but how to make those standards real, how to embed them in practice, how to ensure that they're adhered to. Um, but then turning to how to encourage businesses to do more good, um, I think we've had some really fascinating examples here, which, which show, in a way, the importance of moving beyond what a few years ago would still have been talked about as a kind of corporate social responsibility, corporate environmental responsibility agenda. Very easy to either become very tokenistic or even write off as greenwash or social wash. What we've been discussing this afternoon, um, for the most part, are examples where the social and the environmental are being embedded into core business strategy and I think we've heard some really powerful themes and reasons why it makes sense for um, the sustainability of businesses and their economies in their own terms to think much harder about the, the social and the environmental um, ways in which they're operating whether it's been around ensuring the sustainability of supply chains into the future, having support of community contexts, um, building up skilled labour forces, or indeed having a vibrant set of markets in which those businesses are operating. Um, so I think there's a very important argument coming through here that poverty reduction, reduced inequality, sustained resource bases are and need to be part of core business strategy. And that's great, that's a very positive story. Um, but I'd like to go beyond that, actually, again, to, to draw out some of the tensions that I've also heard this afternoon. And one is that um, it isn't always quite so easy. There are cases where those long-term interests conflict with short-term profit, where firms and social responsibilities are thinking about different kinds of impacts over different timescales. Um, and there, I think, we need to identify what some colleagues of mine at IDS are calling kind of alignments and coalitions, rather than that core, that rather than assuming that there's a core interest there. There might be ways in which one can incentivize some working together in the short term while at the same time one tries to work to build and to change values and, and interests towards a stronger, more fundamental alignment of social and business goals of those multiple bottom lines. And I think there are some really important questions and some leads that we've heard here around the ways that, that donors, that NGOs, that governments, that international organisations and standards can help to build those, those alignments and make sure they, they're taken forward. A second theme that, that's often an area of tension that, that I've picked out this afternoon is actually about scale. We've heard a lot about the capacity of businesses to, to take things to scale, but yet I think what's also come through many of the examples is the importance of local context, whether it's in the Zambian agricultural example, whether it's in the ways that, that food and nutrition or health services are being rolled out. It's pretty clear that what poor people need and want, the, what it takes to make rights real in different contexts, what the ecological requirements of operating sustainably are, are very, very different. And these things are important. So what does that mean about scale? I think we're not just talking about finding an, a, a strategy and rolling it up and scaling it out. I think we're talking about something that's more about adaptive scaling, where one has ideas that are then bedding down in different
different ways in different, in different contexts. And I think we're also very much talking about not just scaling up firms um, and what they're doing, but we've heard a great deal about scaling out networks um, and, and, as it were, systems in which different kinds of business and other actors are operating, operating together. Um, and a final area that I think has come up again and again is this theme of system change. Now, I think there's also been a certain amount of tension as to what we really mean by, by system change. Um, to some, it's just been about kind of making the innovation system a bit more responsive and, and, and kind of getting actors to work better together. Um, to others, coming perhaps from a slightly different ideological viewpoint, system change might actually be about rethinking the way we think about growth and capitalism and profit motives. System change might actually be about rethinking some of those more fundamental assumptions about the nature of the system. Um, we might want to be thinking slightly differently about this assumption that, some, that businesses ought to be filling the gap left by a rolling back of the state. It's been quite a comfortable assumption in a lot of the, the, the plenary discussion this afternoon, that, that we can just accept that, that the state is not delivering and businesses should be filling that gap. But we might actually want to question that and say, are actually the, the, is, is it quite important to think also about rebuilding and reinforcing state capacity for the long term? Um, how can the public and private sectors work together in ways that build the public sector and rather than undermining it? And I think system change, as we've also heard implicitly, is not just about economics and it's not just about actor networks. It's also about culture and it's also about power, quite fundamentally. Whose system are we talking about and who shapes it? Um, so I would really kind of end by saying I've got enormous hopes for this business and development centre. I think it's going to be really exciting. And I think, um, as has been emphasised, it, it, it seems to me to be filling quite, a, quite an important need for evidence, evidence of what works, where, when and how. Um, evidence that can be objective, that can really delve deeply and look across, look across these different chains, which can look specifically at how things work out in, in different sectors. And, and some of the focal ones that the IDS work are going to be taking forward um, are around food and agriculture and nutrition, around health and around energy and green transformations. They've also been themes that I think other speakers have highlighted as, as important. But I'd, I'd also like to see this centre as a place for for reflection and critical debate too picking up on the points that just came up at the end of at the end of the last session i think there are some more fundamental tensions out there i think if we went beyond the comfortable sort of consensus in this room we've got tensions that are political tensions that are ideological um, but also tensions that come from different places and different positions in this field um, so a good center i think would be a place for having some of those debates, um, being, as it were, a set of critical friends to, to business actors, um, but also constructive ones, and actually a place where we can have these debates openly and backed up by real evidence. Um, it also needs to be a place of mutual learning. Um, and uh, um, a place of mutual learning amongst firms and businesses, but also about amongst people who are in the donor community, um, in the NGO community, and who are working in very different countries. And I think here some of the shared experiences and, and different experiences that we're seeing across um, different countries, whether we're talking about Africa and Asia, whether we're talking about the rising powers and the growing experiences in the BRICS and the mints and these other acronyms that are being used are going to be very, very important. Um, so what are we going to do with all of this? What are some of the next steps for, for the centre? Um, well, one is what's going to happen after today. We're very keen to capture some of these key themes and issues that have emerged. It's been a very, very rich and useful debate and set of examples, I think. So there's going to be a report that's circulated of some of the discussions today, including the questions that were captured from the table discussions earlier on. Um, there are quite a lot of resources that have been picked up. You'll have seen people doing recording and taking photographs, and there are bits of film and some, some elements of uh, parts of the debate have been recorded. 
included. And we'll be sharing those with participants through the website and, and in other ways. And we'd also encourage everybody here to sign up on, I think there have been various sheets circulating, to make sure that you're on mailing lists into the future and be, can be kept up to date with emerging news. Um, the Business and Development Centre has already produced a working paper and a policy brief which were, were in your packs. Um, they're both entitled Understanding and Enhancing the Role of Business in International Development. There are some upcoming further working papers which pick up on different themes, one on agriculture and nutrition, one on health, one on green transformation. Um, and they'll be forthcoming. You'll also have seen in your um, packs some rather mysterious little credit card size red things. I wondered what they were. I've now been enlightened actually that that's a, that's a, a, a flash drive which has got some um, a number of other publications emerging from IDS on it. So do have a look at those. Um, they're a, a kind of link into the kind of resources that I think we'll be producing many more of. Um, I'd also like to mention that the Centre and the IDS Rising Powers in International Development Programme are going to be hosting an event in Brazil next week focusing on green transformation um, as part of the BRICS Academic Forum. That will, I think, be a very important event to, to carry on with what I flagged as mutual learning, particularly amongst those rising powers countries. Um, and the centre will be holding a series of future events which pick up on some of these other sectoral themes. And finally, um, a key focus of the centre's work and the, as the way I think we hope it will operate is as a, a go-to place for debate and evidence but also as a point in a network of collaboration. Um, we really want to focus on ways of working together um, and in this way we're very, very keen to maintain contact with all of you and as well as to widen our impacts and networks and partnerships with others. So I'd really like to conclude by saying please, please keep in touch and kind of watch this space um, as, as the centre moves forward and continue to tell us what you would like to see so that we can make it, make it useful to everybody. Um, please send us your ideas, specific ideas or more general ones about ways we could work together. And please continue the beginnings of that ongoing conversation by joining us for drinks um, right now over the next hour or so in the room there where we had lunch where there'll be a reception and we hope we can carry on with some informal networking. So I'm going to hand over to, to John who I think has got some final, final words to say but I'd like to say a very big thank you to all of you and to hope that we can continue to interact into the future. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can see from the reaction, and, and I all anticipated it, it's coming like a horror movie, you know, that uh, you just think you're about to escape, and uh, uh, a new demon appears to make your life uh, miserable. And I'm also aware that, as Melissa has just mentioned the drinks, then there's an even greater urgency for people to get outside and start socialising. So I should be incredibly brief. First of all, I'd like to thank the speakers, and I'd like to spank, thank all of you attendees for uh, coming to this meeting. I know that you all have busy schedules, and that uh, you know, this is a time out of uh, you could be doing other things and uh, we appreciate the fact that you've um, you know, shown your interest and commitment to uh, the work that we're trying to do. Uh, I'd also like to thank the, uh, the staff at IDS the, in, in the comms team, communications team who have done such a good job in bringing this event together and uh, you know, I think uh, without that, you know, without their help and, and their support uh, this would not have taken place and finally in terms of thanks I want to thank the, the students we have, a, we have a course on globalisation, business and development and most of the students from that course have come up today to learn more about business and development but also to, um, uh, to uh, work with us and to you know, provide support and I think they've done a fantastic job um, uh, over the course of the day um, and so let's give a round of applause for the people that have made it happen. Um, 
I'd like to thank you for providing us with a big agenda. I think Alistair Fernie is right to say that obviously we're not a large multinational corporation uh, because that's what we would need to be if we were able to do, do all of the things that you've asked. So we're going to be selective. Um, and, uh, but we're not alone in this. And so it's about developing the network so we can actually address these issues collectively rather than, than on our own. And that's also part of the function of today. And, and I take Alistair Fernie's point about uh, impact um, we do need a theory of change. We will be uh, working on precisely how we can turn uh, ideas into action, and uh, that's something which is very much on our agenda. So um, I just want to say that one of the ways of doing that is making personal contact and, dis and, and uh, getting to know people, because in the end, uh, academia and research is basically a, a people business and a personal contact business. You work with people that you trust. So what I want to do now is suggest that we go and do some personal contact and trust building in a convivial environment. So thank you very much.